welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I hope my microphone will be better today. I'm sorry about that yesterday. I realised what had happened um, as I was reviewing the video, and basically it was the wrong microphone that was switched on. So hopefully today I will be crystal clear and my tones will be suitably dulcet. Um, we shall see. Uh, what are we wrestling with today? Well, we're going to do battle with a new puzzle by Kane Puzzles, which is the pseudonym of Chan Erteran. Um, the Turkish phenom, and I use phenom completely justifiably um, because Chan is 14 years old. We featured his puzzles many times on the channel. They're always very well received, and frankly, they leave one absolutely jaw dropped because how how 14 year old children can start coming up with this absolute brilliance? I have no idea, but. Chan did incredibly well in the World Sudoku Championship last year and I think this year goodness only knows we may be doing a puzzle by a future world champion that's all we shall say it's called uh, not too high not too low I don't know what that means but I am a little bit intrigued by these two by twos in the corner uh, anyway I've no idea how hard this is either um, Chan's puzzles are normally I would say mm, sort of seven out of ten for difficulty uh, and 10 out of 10 for beauty in my eyes. Um, so we'll have a look at the rules of this one in a moment or two. What have I got to tell you about? Loads of things. Um, it's nearly the 1st of April, which is not only April Fool's Day, but it is the first day of the new month. And that means it's Patreon Reward Day. And we've got something absolutely startling for you here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the Sudoku Skunk Works and their Nightmare on Sudoku Street, um, which is all based around, um, I like this as well, a Nightmare Puzzle Haunt, so with the A crossed out. Um, this is all based around a new constraint, a new type of constraint in Sudoku, which is a sort of, it's a knight's move constraint where cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot sum to 5 or 15. Now that does some strange things to the world of logic, let me tell you. Um, but I think there are 19 puzzles in all in that hunt. So look forward to that. Uh, yeah. They're mind blowing. Um, next, Gas 2, that our new genuinely approachable Sudoku pack is released. It is out on all platforms. I, I'll put some links in the video description. Um, 60 new gas puzzles. And these are, of course, are the puzzles um, that appear every day on the Discord server, but you only get one of them on the Discord server. And the ones that are in this pack, in this new app, are completely new. They cannot be, they cannot be gleaned anywhere else. So do check those out. I think it's uh, two bucks ninety nine is the price. Um, and right now, I'm still going to be catching up on birthdays for a while now. So if you have written in and you've asked for a birthday and I haven't read it out yet, I was obviously skiing last week. Um, and I, I, I can't do birthdays for the whole video, but I will try and catch them up as quickly as we can. Let's start with Dwayne, who turned 63 back on the 19th of March. And we know this because your son Derek wrote to us and described you. I know you're still teaching, Dwayne, and you are a great role model indeed. Um, and the, the email we had from Derek was full of affection for you. So we hope you had a, had a brilliant birthday. Um, not a birthday next, but an anniversary. Happy anniversary. I think it might be. No, it was the 24th this happened. Jeffrey, it was your anniversary, your 33rd anniversary. Uh, you and your wife, Lindy. Um, and Lindy described you as a wonderful husband and father, and she cannot imagine life without you, which is, I think, after 33 years, if your wife is telling you that, Jeffrey, you are doing something right, my friend. Um, another anniversary. Uh, Kyra or Kira and Moose uh, and Moose has got Kyra or Kira into CTC so thank you Moose for that and we hope you have a brilliant day it might be today that birthday or oh, no that anniversary I'm not sure um, Louisa you turned 22 back on the 22nd of March we know this because your girlfriend Ella wrote to us um, we hope you have a, had a brilliant day with a suitable amount of chocolate cake and finally Eric Eric, you turned nine. I love hearing about these young followers of the channel. You turned nine back on the 25th uh, of March. And I know this because your dad, Kevin, wrote to us. And I understand, Eric, that you're over there in Massachusetts. Now, Massachusetts is one of those places I can never hear the name Massachusetts without thinking of one of my very favorite quotes in the whole of, well, it's actually in the whole of prose. 
in uh, David Mitchell's book, The Bone Clocks, uh, David Mitchell does what he tends to do, which is just go off into literary paroxysms of amazing, uh, of just, of, well, it's just stunning quality. Uh, and it starts writing in poetry. So the, uh, now I'm going to get this wrong now, but I, I do trot it out occasionally when I have cause to, and whenever I hear the word Massachusetts, I have cause to. So it starts off something like, um, up the highest tree of all spirals Hershey's absent mind known only unto squirrels and crows the Hudson River stately winds between the Catskills pigeon toes a train's revealed a train's obscured a quote around a broken cup I like to see it lap the miles and lick the valleys up Google Earth like soars his mind through clouds where snowstorms brew New York State has dropped away, and Massachusetts flew, and Newfoundland is ice entombed and rock or gull beshatten, where no eye sees the lightning flash its momentary pattern. Isn't that beautiful? And he just drops this into the middle of a chapter. And if you don't, if you're not used to David Mitchell, you wouldn't even expect there to be that sort of that sort of poetry sitting in the middle of a page on the book it's not announced there's no fanfare and probably most people read the book and don't even notice it but i noticed it and it's stuck with me all these years um anyway <laughs> it's not really about sudoku is it um next next i've got more more correct names for solvers of the whole of alice's adventures in sudoku land which was the wonderful hunt you've you've all been loving and that featured poetry as well um which was the patron reward for March, and the following people solved the whole thing correctly, I might add. Uh, Jürgen Vokenfuss, Andrew Payne, Marvin Welsh. Uh, no, no, not Marvin Welsh. Marvin, it could be Weish or Weish, not sure. Didn't have any pronunciation guidance. Sorry, Marvin. Um, Joseph Lisito, Michael Lieberman, Joris Codard, Drew Elledge. Meryl Jansen, Fabi Lina, Robert Dahlstrom, Jay Cricket, Ben Cotter, Zach Burns, Andrew and Ruth. Um, and thank you, Andrew and Ruth, for introducing your friends to Cracking the Cryptic. Apparently they are now hooked as well. Um, that is the ultimate in the search engine optimization, something that we don't understand, but which we did. Um, David Armstrong, Andy Spicer, Jonathan Teddy McManus, and Milos uh, Nenich as well. Milos Nenich. There you go. Very well solved. One and all. Now let's have a look at the fairly simple rules of Not Too High, Not Too Low by Kane Puzzles. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. The digits in a cage sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage and digits cannot repeat within a cage. So those three cells sum to 13, but what we're not allowed to do is that. Because although those three digits do sum to 13, you've repeated the five in the cage and that's jolly naughty, don't do it. Um, Neighboring digits along a green line have a difference of at least five. So we've got a sprinkling of green lines in the grid. So imagine this square here was, I don't know, a seven. If that's a seven, this square here has to be at least five away from seven. So it has to be a two or a one. And then this cell would have to be at least five away from one, which would mean it would have to be six, seven, eight, or nine. That's how green lines work. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking and let's, well, do we start with what he's shouting at me about this puzzle? Or do we start with the secrets? I always like to let you, I always reveal my secrets a bit too laxly, don't I? But there are some secrets going on, I think, in this puzzle. And I don't have a good idea as to whether I should talk about the, the secrets of the two by twos in the corners or the secrets of the green lines. Um, I think I'll start, I think I've got to start with the two by twos in the corners, don't I? So there is, there is a theorem in Sudoku, which has become to be, come to be known as the Fistenfell theorem. And basically it states that those blue cells I've just highlights, highlighted in the corner of the grid, there are 16 of those cells and they contain the identical digits to those 16 digits in the ring here. 
those digits are identical so you know if you found this one you might find it there you could tick them off and then you found this one you find it there and you tick them off and you'd find that there was an exact mapping between these sets of digits it's really a quite remarkable thing um, but it's if you're used to variant Sudoku, you're probably familiar with it. But we always we don't like to assume that anybody watching the video has watched all our other videos. So we tend to explain it uh, and to prove it each time. So forgive me if you don't like watching me prove Fistema Fell, then forward wind the video by a couple of moments. Um, but how do you prove that that is true? Now the way to do it actually is to use Scrabble bags, believe it or not. That is the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to start off by highlighting those cells, though, in green. And let's miss out that middle box as well. So we can describe the contents of those green cells I've just, uh, I've just highlighted extremely precisely. Um, because this row here is a whole row of the Sudoku. And therefore it contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. This row here is another complete row of the Sudoku, therefore it contains the digits 1 to 9. This is a complete box of the Sudoku, so it contains the digits 1 to 9. And this is a complete box of the Sudoku, so this contains the digits 1 to 9. In other words, the contents of the green cells can be precisely described as four sets of the digits 1 to 9. Within these green cells there will be four digit 1s. There will be four digit twos, four digit threes, all the way through to four digit nines. Now obviously we don't know where the digits go exactly, but we do know in total the contents of the green, the green shaded cells. Now what I want you to imagine, or maybe I should have used a different colour, I'll use a different colour, I'll use blue. Um, I want you to imagine that for each of these digits that are in blue, we write them on a Scrabble tile like this and pop it in a bag. So this bag here, you'll have to trust me on this, we're going to say contains 36 Scrabble tiles, four of which will have a digit one on them, four will have a digit two, four will have a digit three, etc. all the way to four having a digit nine. That is what we've got in this bag. Now, now we're going to highlight some other things instead. I want to highlight the whole of, I'm going to highlight all of these cells in orange. Now, I have an orange bag specially prepared. Um, we can describe the contents of the orange cells absolutely precisely in the same way. This column of the grid contains the digits 1 to 9. This column contains the digits 1 to 9. This column, the digits 1 to 9. This column, the digits 1 to 9. In other words, the orange cells also contain four sets of the digits 1 to 9. Again, we don't know how the 1 to 9 are disposed within the orange set, but we know altogether the orange cells are four sets of the digits 1 to 9. So I want to imagine that we we write all of these digits on Scrabble tiles and plonk them in this bag. So this bag, you can hear, contains 36 tiles, four of which have a digit 1, four of which have a digit 2, etc, etc. In other words, the blue bag and the orange bag at this point contain the identical Scrabble tiles. They are the same because they each contain four sets of the digits 1 to 9. Now, imagine that we went and hunted for this tile, whatever this tile is, in both bags. And we found it in both bags and we threw it away. Let's do that. Boom! It's now no longer highlighted because it's no longer in either bag. If we did that, what could we say about the, the bags now? And the crucial thing is, now we can't exactly say what's in the bags because we don't know what digit was in this cell. But we do know that the 35 tiles in each bag are still the same because whatever was in this, we removed it from both bags. I'm going to do that with this one as well and this one. And it doesn't matter that we don't know what the digit is because if we, imagine we knew the solution, we, we could absolutely do this precisely. The, po the point is that by removing this, whatever this happens to be, from both bags, we're keeping what's left in the bag the same. So any tile that appears in both bags, i.e. all of the cells that contain both colours, we can remove from the bags and we end up here. 
with we've only got 16 cell or 16 tiles now left in our orange bag and we've only got 16 tiles left in our blue bag but what's left in both bags must be the same because as we remove the tiles we remove the same thing from each bag um, and that's the proof of Fistimafel so it's a geometric proof it's it's true for any Sudoku and so why am I doing it here well because it looks it just shrieks this this puzzle shrieks to me that we must be having to use somehow the fact that this blue ring here contains oh sorry we're looking after a dog today <laughs> the dog barks a lot um <laughs> the um it contains digits that sum to 80 because these four two by twos each sum to 20. Now, I imagine what we're going to have to do is to merge that secret, that's the first secret of, of, of the puzzle, with the second secret. And that secret relates to green lines. So let's have a think about green lines for a moment and think about how they work. Because a green line, let's use this one because it's unadulterated chromatically at this point. Um, the thing we can say about a green line, firstly, can it ever have a five on it? No is the answer because the next digit the adjacent neighboring digit has to be at least five different from five if we decide to go upwards we'll get to 10 which is not a valid sudoku digit or higher and if we go downwards we get to zero also not a valid sudoku digit or lower so you can't put five on a line now what that means is that each digit along the line is either lower or higher than five it's a slightly fatuous thing to say but this is why i'm saying it so let's imagine this digit is lower than five, i.e. it's a one, two, three, or four. This next digit then has an interesting property. It must be higher than five. Because even if this was as low as it could be, i.e. a one, and increased by the minimum it could increase, which would be only five, one plus five is still six. It's still on the top side of five and then think about this if this is six seven eight or nine what's this well again even if this was nine and only reduced by exactly five it would still be four which is the low side of five so green lines oscillate we, we say oscillate polarity we got into trouble when we said oscillate parity once or twice um, so green lines oscillate and never contain five so how does this help us solve the puzzle? And the answer is, I have not got a clue yet, but I imagine it's going to be something to do with the fact that this green line is quite interesting because, because we oscillate polarity, you can see that as we go along the line, if this was low, this would be low, this would be low, that would be low, that would be low. So all of those five cells there have the same polarity, which means that the other cells on this line have the opposite polarity to that. Um, I guarantee that the dog is not in any trouble. The dog just likes barking. <laughs> um, okay. So, is I'm just wondering, is 80 high or low for the ring? It feels slightly high to me. Oh no, maybe, oh, maybe not actually. It's very easy to get there. I can ima I mean, imagine those digits were five, six, seven, eight, and nine. They would add up to 35. Those would add up to 35 if they were five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and that would give us 70 of the 80 we need. So we wouldn't have to make those very high at all. So if, hmm, the average Sudoku... Oh, yeah, in fact, it's, it's exactly average, isn't it? Sorry, I should have appreciated that immediately, but didn't. Um, holiday brain. So these are 16 digits. The average Sudoku digit is a 5. 5 16s are 80, which is exactly what uh, the 2 by 2s add up to. So in fact, what... That's weird. Okay, so so the blue, the blue ring is very, very average. <laughs> Bar humbug. Um, okay, so what we need to do, so if these were all low digits, they're either all low or all high. If they were all low, they would have a maximum value of four. 
So you could have 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, or something like that, which would be 16 as a maximum if these are low. But that's still, that's, that's absolutely fine, isn't it? Because I can basically, if I make that a 5, make that add up to 35 and that add up to 35, you, you, we're, we're getting very close to 80 easily without even including those digits. So, hmm. Ah, 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 okay. Maybe the 13 clue then. The 13, those two can't both be high. Because if they were both high, they would be a 6 and a 7 as a minimum. And that would have to be a zero. Right, so at least one of these is low. They're either both low, or one is high and one is low. So if one was high and one was low, that would only give us seven, wouldn't it? And that would still allow that to be high or low. Um, oh no, hang on, no it wouldn't, because six and one wouldn't, we wouldn't, we couldn't repeat the six. But if both of these were low, that could then be high maybe it would need to be high. Uh, yes, it would. If that was three and four, that would still need to be six. Uh, okay, sorry, I'm not thinking about this very clearly. I, I've exhausted <laughs> I've exhausted telling you my secrets. And now... And now I'm not quite sure what to do. Um, It must be something to do with, it must be something to do with Vistamavel, I think. Maybe let's just highlight these ones. So this, the oscillation of the polarity on this sort of W shape is, it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? Those four have the same polarity and they're all on the ring. I mean, it must be this. It's this somehow or other. I just don't quite understand how to do it yet don't like that I don't like that green in that position let's use um, no red maybe I'll use red um, right so how does this work how does this work I, I think What if this was all low? Does that thing run us into problems? Maybe the point is you can't have all of these. I think you could probably have them all high. Oh, oh yeah, and that would put that, that would make that opposite. Um. I'm just, I, I don't think the maths is going to be that constraining, unfortunately. It feels very, very obvious to me that if all of those were high, I can easily get to 80. And if all of those were low, I still feel like I'm going to get to 80. Because I've still, I can still cram loads of high digits into these cells. In fact, I could put four nines I think into those squares maybe it's that oh is maybe it's something to do with that maybe I can't repeat too many digits twenty oh my goodness me right no this is really easy oh dear oh dear oh dear that's weird. Why couldn't I see that? Oh, that's just awful. <laughs> uh, okay. That's... Well, do I blame myself for what I'm about to tell you or not? I know most of you will have spotted this already. And those who have spotted it might, lead, might like to make their comments kind about my ineptitude. Um, but it's actually really pretty, to be honest. Um, 
this is this is what happens when you're dealing with young geniuses they just make you feel stupid right what's the makeup of a 20 cage and and in particular the way we need to the the thing that that made me think about this is we have to think about it in the context of polarity what is the makeup of it and the point is surely how many high digits can I put in there? By high, I mean six, seven, eight, or nine. Well, the answer is not more than two. Because if I do try and put six, seven, and eight in, they will already add to 21, and the other digit will be a minus one. So there is a maximum of two in that 20 cage, a maximum of two high digits. And that applies for all the 20 cages, which means there's a maximum of eight high digits in the ring. Now, that's interesting because that shows that grey, if grey was high, grey is different from yellow, because otherwise there would be nine high digits. But it's the same for low digits. How many low digits, i.e. ones, twos, threes and fours, can I put in the two by twos in the corner? And the answer is not that many. <laughs> Talk's going mad. Um, because if I put four, three and two in, that's only 9. The other digit would have to be an 11. That doesn't work. So I could put a maximum of two low digits in a 2x2 two two in the corner, which means there's a maximum of eight low digits in the ring. So again, it's not possible if grey was low for yellow to also be low. In other words, grey and yellow are different. In other words, yellow is purple. <laughs> That's what we've just proved. Because grey and yellow can't be the same polarity, um, because that would put nine of a high or a low digit on the ring, we've got to switch this round. So yellow is now purple and red is grey. Oh, right, so now it's, now it's just done. So now the 13 cage is just finished. It, when I say finished, I'm using that slightly euphemistically. What it is is we can't make purple. Purple, we've discovered, is the same polarity, obviously. So if these were both high, that would be a zero, because this would be at least a six, seven pair. So purple is low. There we go, we've done it. <laughs> purple is low, it's as simple as that. Once we, once we explored the secret fully, we could understand what was going on. So that means gray is high and right and now this digit is high because even if i put four and three in there that still has to be a six so that means this little sort of dog-legged uh whisper line has to have high digits in those two which means that's a low digit i've got four high digits in uh ah that might be worth thinking about actually i've got four high digits in row three so one of these has to be a six and the reason I'm focusing in on six is that six is the monogamous digit. It's the most monogamous of the high polarity digits because it only likes pairing up with one purple digit. And that digit is in fact the one because a six can only go with a one on a green line. Um, now, so that can't be a six, for example, because that would put two ones in box one. That can't be a six because it would put two ones in row two that that can be a six because you could put two ones i think in those two cells maybe can't immediately see why that's impossible um now can that be a six that would put a one here I don't know. That's not a one. That's something we can see. One of these is a six. So one of those is a one. So that's not a one. Which means neither of these can be a six. Uh, oh, okay. Now I've got a seven, eight, nine triple in this column. That's weird. Is it, did I do that properly? Hang on a minute. Let me just double check that. That seemed to emerge out of nowhere. One of those must be a six. If that's six, that's a one. If that's six, that's a one. Yeah, that's that can't be a one, which means neither of these can be a six. 
and that couldn't be why couldn't oh that can be a six because that would be double one there okay so there is a seven eight nine triple in column three right so what do we do with this well there's some things we can do we can get rid of fours from both of these squares because four is the most monogamous of the low digits it only partners up with nine and if you can see if we put four there you get double nine here if you put four there you get double nine there so we can't put fours into these squares all that one oh actually maybe not maybe none of these can have four no yeah none of these blue digits are oh, so blue none of these purple digits can can contain a four um, for fear of creating too many nines. Okay. Um, right, let's let's explore down here. Let's see what we can do with fours and sixes. That can't be a six because it would cause double one. That can't be a four, it would cause double nine. That can be a four rather annoyingly. Because it only sees one digit on the whisper and that could then be a nine that one yeah these two cells don't see each other so i think this one can be anything that one can't be four would cause nines in those squares that one can be four bobbins that one can be six that one can't be six because that would cause double one right okay <laughs> Right, so what does this do then? Um, seven. Those two digits are in here. I want to say that must be true. Whatever these two digits are, they're not the same as this one. So those two digits have friends, i.e. the set, i.e. two of these three digits are the same as these digits, which means in box one, they can't go in those cells. So they get shoved, shoved into the 20 cage. So those two digits go in the 20 cage. So that digit is a six. So that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Right. Why is this digit a six? Well, it's because, because these two are in the 20 cage. Um, we can't put any more high digits in the 20 cage. So the fourth high digit in this box, which is not here by Sudoku, has to go there. And from the 789 triple, we know it's a six. That's beautiful, but underwhelming, isn't it? Um, probably. Uh, hang on a minute, let me think about this. So we've got two high digits in here. But we can't, they can't be an 8 9 pair. If that was an 8 9 pair, that would be 8 9 1 2 to add up to 20, and that would mean both of these squares had to be a 3. Maverick has taken off in the world's most noisy small plane and is buzzing past my house. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. So this is not 8 9, so one of these must be a 7, which means that is not a 7. One of these is a 7. That doesn't, unfortunately, impinge upon these two squares. Ah, but what would happen if that was a 7-9 pair? If that was a 7-9 pair in there, this would be 7-9-1-3 to add up to 20, and that would make both those squares a 2, and that still doesn't work. So this is a 7-8 pair, adding up to 15. That's therefore a 9. These squares are not, not, not now 9. Uh, there's a 7 and an 8 in here, and not 2 and 3. Because if we put two and three in there, most of both of these will be a one. So this is seven, eight, one, four. These are not one. We've got a two, three here, a two, three here. This square here is a naked single five. It's the digit that's left over, which almost feels... I'm going to make five its own colour. I'll make that green. Um, okay, so that's that's very good yes i can see what to do this now can't be seven because seven is nearly monogamous <laughs> it likes the occasional fraternization uh, so so seven can only go with one and two 
So if we put it here, you can see this is a 2-3 pair, and that's not going to work. The, the 3 and the 7 will be too close together. So we've got to put the 8 there, which makes that 7, which means that can't be 3. So that's got to be 2, that's got to be 3, that's got to be 2. This is now a 1 or a 3. Um, oh, bobbins, that, that's not resolved, I don't think. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I can't see how to do that. Let me just think about this for a second or two, or possibly three. Um, that's six, seven, or eight. So this can't be four or two. That's one or three only. This digit is high, and it's not eight. So it's either six, seven, or nine. Yeah. Okay, that is not a 3. If that was a 3, what would this digit be? And the answer is 9. Look, let, let's do this longhand. If that's 3, that's 9, because it has to be at least 5 away, and it's the only valid option. But now this 13 cage must be 913, but that 3 rules 3 out of both, of both possible 3 positions. That doesn't work. So that's 1. That's going to get rid of 1 in all sorts of places. Unfortunately, though, well, that's not two either. Ah, this is three or four, so that can't be six or seven. This is an eight, this one here, because it's this square has been very much restricted, and we need something five different from three or four, so that's got to be eight. That's got to be seven, so that's got to be one now, because otherwise it would be too close to seven if it was a three. So these are not ones. 8 can't go next to 4, so that's got to be a 3. That's not a 3, therefore, because it's in the same cage. That's not a 3. Um, that's not a 9 now, because this can't be a 1. So this is 6 or 7. And if it, Oh, it's not 7, because then that would need to be a 3 in order to make the maths work. So that is a 6, I want to say, which means that's a 4. 4 only, only goes with 9 on a whisper. That squares a 6 by Sudoku, because it can't be 7 or 8. And that squares beautiful now, because that sees all low polarity digits by Sudoku. It sees 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's a high digit, which is a grey digit. And it's a 7 or an 8. No, it's not. It's a 7. It can only be a 7 which means this is a 1 or a 2. I don't believe it. Apparently, both options are available. Bar humbug. Okay, bobbins. Um, let's try then. Well, this is not 9 now. This can't be 6 because that can't be 1. So that, this is down to 7 or 8. Now. Hmm. Okay. can't immediately see how to resolve that. What about this row, though? We've got all sorts of shenanigans going on. We only need 4, 5, and 9. So that's a 4 or a 9 by Sudoku. These are 4, 5, or 9. They definitely include the green digit. The, oh, these squares are 1, 2, 1, 2, and 4. Ah, so that's a 1 or a 2. The 4 in row 3 has to go here which doesn't, unfortunately, impinge upon anything at the bottom there. Um, 29. Right, okay, now we now we use... Is this the first time we've used the secret? Another secret? It might be. I think it is. Okay, well, let, let me tell you another secret. This is a, an absolute lips loosening edition of cracking the cryptic um the nine different digits in any sudoku box sum to 45 don't tell anybody just remember it well if that's true and it is um those squares add up to nine those add up to 20 29 is what these seven cells add up to so these two cells have to add up to 16 to make the box add up to 45 and there's only one way of making 16 in two cells and that's a seven nine pair so these squares are now 3, 4, 5, and 8. 
Uh, this is not going okay. This is not quite done, is it? It doesn't want. To, it doesn't want me to find out. Ah, okay. Here's the point. Where does six go in this box? And the answer. Well, it's in one of these three positions, but it's not here because six is so monogamous. It would need to be next to a one, and it can't be. So six is in the cage at the bottom. Um. Okay, and there's got to be another high digit in there, look, because of this 7-9 pair. So if we if we look at this box and think about Sudoku, 7 and 9 can't go in those squares. Now, you can't put 7 and 9 on a German whisper line because they're not 5 apart. So one of them is going to live with its friends in the 20 cage. So this is either 6 and 9... Uh, which would be 15. Sorry, I'm just trying to work out if I can work, if I know what that means. And then that, that would go with either 2, 3 or 1, 4. Hmm. Or it's 6 and 7, which would be 13. And then I would need 7 more. Ah, okay. That, I couldn't do that 7 with a 5, look, because 5 in this column is down here. Isn't it? Because it doesn't seem to be able to be in any of those cells. So if it is 7 and 6 in there, it would have to be 3 and 4. It would have to be 3, 4, 6, 7. Now why does that fail? 3, 4, 6, 7... I don't know actually. Um, three, four, six, seven. If the four. I'm just wondering about whether I can really get away with putting the four on the green line because then it would have nine with it. It'd have to be that way round. Four, nine. Why is my phone buzzing? Um, Okay, four nine here. Oh, that's right. That's sim right. Simple. It's simple. Right. You don't. You can't put four on this green line, because if you put four on the green line, it has to go with nine, uh, because it's monogamous. But now you can't make that work, because we said we said this was either a nine with a six. That was one option. Well, if I put the four up here, the nines up here as well, so it wouldn't be six and nine, or it was six, seven, three, four. Well, that needs a four. So if we put the four up here, it, the nine goes up here as well. The seven has to go down here and the four can't go with it. So, I'm not actually sure this does it as much as I thought, but there's definitely a four in here. That's what we've learned. So we've got two digits that add up to 10 and we need two more digits that add up to 10. Uh, right, and that's not one nine because the one and the nine would go into these squares along with the six, and that would put three digits in two cells. So it's not, so it's either three and seven or two and eight. Okay, and it's not two and eight because there's an eight down here in this column, that's beautiful. If you look at this column, where's the eight going? I don't know exactly, but it's definitely in one of those cells, so it's not in the cage. So this cage is three, four, six, seven. Um, which means that three, four, six, seven, those are not seven, those are not six. Uh, uh, okay, and that therefore, and we need to put a high digit in one of these two squares for polarity, and that digit is now a nine, which doesn't go there. So that's a nine, oh, that's a nine. This digit here is a, well, it's a two, isn't it? But it's the only available option because it can't be one. And it can't be three and four because they're in the cage. So that's a two. This is a one. This is not a one or a two. So that's a three or a four, which means this can't be a seven now. Um, okay. There's definitely a nine in there of all places in this two in this two by two. And and a two look. There's definitely a 2 in there as well. So we've got 11 of the 20 we need in this 2 by 2. So we need 9 more. 
Uh, see if I could lock. If I knew that, well, if I knew that was a one, I would be able to lock a one eight in there as well. Yeah, here's an interesting point actually. I've got four high digits. In fact, let's let's grayify this to solidify that knowledge. Six, seven, eight, nine here. Not in those squares. We know we can only put two high digits in a twenty cage. So the other two high digits must be in those squares. They've got to be grey. So this is six, seven, eight, nine. We know they're not nine. So this is six, seven, or eight. Which is perhaps interesting. Uh, or not. Let me just think about this. Um, okay. All right, I might be stuck again now. Do we know? Do we know anything about anything? Do I, I must know what those digits are. These are one, five, and eight now. So that digit's a two. That's a one, and that's a three, and that's great. Okay, so that does this digit. That's now got to be eight because it can't be seven. It wouldn't be far away enough away. That's now nine. It doesn't tell me what this is. That could still be three or four. 9 is now not in those two squares in box 7. Um, right, what are those digits? They're 2, 5 and 8. That one's not 2, that one's not 8. I've got a horrible feeling that I'm I'm now being incredibly slow at Sudoku. Imagine if you're Chan watching this as well, and you're sort of on the verge of being the world Sudoku champion. It must be very frustrating to watch somebody as slow as I am complete your puzzle. Um, that's not a one by Sudoku. Yes. Okay. Where does three go in this box? And the answer is there by simply Sudoku. I mean, it's outrageous that I made to do Sudoku so early in these Sudoku puzzles. But there we have it. Um, there's now no three in that. Which means there is no six in that. Ah, oh, Bobbins, right, yes. Okay, so this this cage, we know it's got two and nine in it by Sudoku. So the other two digits we need add up to nine. Well, it can't now have six in it because that we can't put three in it. And it can't have seven in it because it would need to have a two in it. So the only digit it can have, given that it needs to have another high digit in it by Sudoku, is eight. So this is one, two, eight, nine, I think. These are not two. These are not nine. These are not eight anymore. So this is six and seven. So one in this column now has to go here. Which means one in the middle box has to go here. So and one is a one is a purple digit, isn't it? So let's put that in and see if that helps with anything. Um, well, now I know what these digits are. They're th oh, they're three, four, and five. That's probably a not not terribly clever, is it? Ah, but I can't put five on a green line. So this ah, this is resolved. Right. This is three or four, so it's low, which is purple, which means that's purple by polarity. This is grey by polarity. This is six, well, yeah, this is six or eight by polarity, but it can't be six because it could never be next to three or four. It wouldn't be far enough away. So this is eight, which means this is three because it can't be four. It would be too close. Um, this square is now one, two or three. No, it's not one, it's two or three. This three means these squares are not three. So there's a three here, which means this square is a two can't be three anymore because there's a three looking at it in this domino. Now that being a two takes a two out of that cell. So this is one eight, which seems to make this a nine. Yeah, that's a nine. That's a two. Beautiful. 
9. Where does 9 go in box 4? Boom, it goes there by Sudoku. So we can get rid of the 9 pencil mark here. So we've got a 4 5 pair there. Feels like 2's done in this middle box, but I. Can't, I can see it's in one of two places, but I don't know that I do know where it is. Um, now, oh, if this is 1, 8, that is 5 by Sudoku. So that's 8, that's 1. Does that do anything? 5 means that's 5 and that's 4. So this square is a 3 or a 4. And that 4, look, is, is looking along here which means this square is 6 or 7. It can't be 3, obviously, because we know the 3 is over here. So these squares are 5, 6s and 7s. Um, <laughs> come on, Simon. Uh, is this somehow resolved? Probably. OK, let's try. Shall we try these digits instead? 4, 5 and 6, I think. Might be able to do something with these. 4 and 5 come out of those squares. Whoa, and the poltergeist is creaking my door. Um, 6 has to be... Okay, 6 has to be in one of those squares in box 2. And 6 has to be in one of those squares in box 8. So 6 is in one of these squares in box, or column 4 is the way to think about it. Right, all right. So now, now what? <laughs> now, are there any easy wins to be had here? How can we have some easy wins? It's going to be Sudoku, isn't it? I know it is. I just can't spot where. Um... Um, 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 let's try, do we think it's the middle box? Oh yeah, okay, 7 is in the same cells that 2 is, so there is a 2-7 pair in the middle box. Oh, and that's 7, does it? Oh, it's 7 in the middle box, there we go, cool. So that's 7, that's 2, that's 6, this is now 5, this is a 7. That's a 5, that's a 4, that's a 4, that's a 3. Okay, that feels like it might have done something. This is, oh, this is 9 and 6 is resolved. So that's a 6, 4, 5. Come on. So that's a 6, that's a 7. Now, what's that done to the world? That feels like it's done all sorts of things. 4 comes out of these squares. 7 comes out of these squares. So we've got a 148 triple up there and a 178 triple up there. Okay, well, that's probably fair enough, isn't it? What about that square, though? That must be presumably resolvable. That's a three. Oh, I've not been looking for threes in corners. Still got no, no threes in corners today. Sorry, I've just seen why. All right, these two squares. Well, we can do the six, actually, can't we? So when we do the six, we'll now get the five up here. How many fives have we got? We've got loads. I could have been greenifying these with a plum. Okay, so that's a four, eight pair, which means this has to be one. That has to be a seven. Eight and four go in. One and eight go in at the bottom. That's now a nine. This is a seven, uh, which means that nine must go here. Two must go here. So we're inching our way forward towards a solution. This is three and five. Um, something must be going along here. That's got to be a two now. So now, what is it? Is it this? Ah, what is it? It must be done. Yes, it's going to be done down here. That's a three. That's a seven. So that's a three. That's a five. That's a five. That's an eight. That's an eight. That's a four. Therefore, that's a four and that's a six. What a brilliant puzzle. Good grief. I hope it's right. Yay. Thank you for solving my puzzle. There's a, some, there's a special message from Chan. It took me a while, didn't it? 50, 54 minutes on the clock. Um, I mean, there was a lengthy introduction, but it's still probably taken me 45 minutes. I uh, loved it, though. Absolutely brilliant. I, I spilled secrets like you wouldn't believe. 
and in the end I managed to understand how the secrets knitted together to create a solution so I mean it's just beautiful it's so it's such simple elegant logic the idea that the 20 cages I mean it's it's very obvious at least to somebody who's experienced I think that Fistamabel is relevant but it's far harder or at least it was far harder for me to see that that meant it forced the polarity of those cells to be different um, that was quite a thought indeed it's just gorgeous take a bow again <laughs> chat <laughs> and let me know in the comments how you got on let me know if you saw that that little rinky dink with the 20 cages very quickly um, I enjoy the comments especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic <laughs>